Last week during Apple's string of quiet updates, one of the first products that was refreshed for 2019 were the iMacs. And uh, it's not a huge dramatic update in terms of look and design, but mostly an update to the internals. And so in this video, we actually got a 27 inch 5K iMac that's got a pretty good set of specs on the inside and can even rival the iMac Pro. And so we're actually gonna put that to test a little bit and kind of just give you overall first impressions of the new 2019 iMac. As I said before, the design for the new 2019 iMac is going to feel familiar. It really hasn't been redesigned since 2012 uh, when Apple made the frame a bit thinner than the previous version. Uh, they added retina displays in 2014 and pretty much since then, they've only really improved display quality and then the specs on the inside. And even though Apple didn't redesign the iMac, it's still a design that works. I still really like the look of the iMacs, um, but obviously I would welcome reduced bezels in a future redesign. Uh, so maybe when Apple, if they release the updated displays that we heard a little bit of rumors about, maybe that's where the iMac might shift into the future. But for right now, we have this very familiar design, which to me, I still really like. I think it really brings out uh, the look of a home office or even in a workplace. It's just, like I said, modern and cool. Um, and it's still a pretty good all-in-one machine. It's actually a very good all-in-one machine. As I mentioned before, this year we have two models, the 4K 21 and a half inch and the 5K 27 inch. And there's still only one color, which is silver, despite some lofty rumors of another color option being available. I think I even heard something like gold, which would have been kind of interesting, don't get me wrong. But I guess the uh, silver is still slated for these iMacs. And if you want space gray, well, you'll have to get an iMac Pro. The ports on the back are also the same. You still get a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. There's an SD card slot, four USB type A ports, two USB type C Thunderbolt 3 ports, and a gigabit ethernet port. With those Thunderbolt 3 ports, not only are you gonna get really fast data transfer speeds, but the iMac can also support one 5K display or two 4K displays at 60 Hertz. So in terms of specs, and keep in mind, this is the unit that we have here. Um, the specs are pretty good. You get a 3.6 gigahertz, eight core, ninth generation Intel Core i9 processor, which is the Coffee Lake chip. Uh, and it can turbo boost up to five gigahertz if you care about that. And there's 16 gigs of DDR4 memory in this particular model. There's a Radeon Pro Vega 48. 512 gigabytes of SSD storage, and it will run you $3,449. Now, as I mentioned, this is the review unit that we have here. There are cheaper options like going with uh, the Fusion Drive, which is like the combination of a normal hard drive and an SSD. Obviously, it's going to be cheaper than an SSD, so you have that option available. Uh, there is a slightly lesser graphics card available, and there's also eight gigabytes of RAM to start off as the base model, which is very important and probably the way that I would go because this iMac is user upgradable in terms of RAM. There's actually a slot right beneath the power cord, and you can pop open this little uh, slot here and update the RAM yourself. Now, if you don't wanna do that and you want 16, 32, or 64 gigabytes of RAM, you can go ahead and add a pretty hefty cost to that, but Apple will do that for you. The important thing is here, if you wanna save some money, you can actually, like I mentioned, easily swap it out yourself. 32 gigabytes of RAM will cost you $600 to go from eight to 32 from Apple's website, but you can actually find a 32 gigabyte RAM kit from a third party seller for only $200. Math was never my strong suit, but saving $400 to me seems like the right way to go. If you do any kind of video editing or graphic intensive work, I would definitely upgrade to the Vega 48 graphics card like this machine has, as well as the i9. Now I know some people might be worried about the i9 processor because there were some thermal issues in the MacBook Pros, but that has not been the case with this iMac so far. So far for me, this computer has been great. I have not had any issues whatsoever, and I really don't anticipate there being any issues. Definitely capable of handling my video editing workflow. 
I've had the fans kick on a few more times than my iMac Pro, but I kind of expected that. I haven't really noticed any real difference in performance. There hasn't really been a whole lot of drop frames, if any, or anything significant during easy tasks. Uh, rendering effects and transitions was a touch slower than the iMac Pro uh, baseline model, which is the one that I have. Um, but that does have a little bit more under the hood. Now, even though during my regular workflow, when I have a couple of different applications open while editing and trying to render out some effects or just export a video with those other applications open, and I notice a little bit more lag with the regular 2019 iMac as opposed to my iMac Pro, even though there was a few more hiccups in that aspect, when you actually export a video uh, and you render out what I did was a 4K, about a one gigabyte file, which is like four minutes and 30 seconds of video. On my iMac Pro, it took two minutes and 44 seconds. But with the new chips, with this new 2019 iMac, I was actually able to render out that exact same video in two minutes and 31 seconds, which I still have the stopwatch here, two minutes and 31 seconds for that. So that might not seem like a big deal, which is, you know, about 13 seconds, but Considering that my iMac cost me about $5,000 for the base model, and this model is only $3,449, I believe, uh, considering that there's a pretty drastic price difference uh, and the performance in terms of rendering out a video and just overall editing is fairly close, if not kind of beating the iMac Pro, it kind of makes you think that, you know, maybe spending five grand on an iMac Pro might not be worth it right now. You can just get this iMac instead and it should probably be good enough for your workflow. Something to just keep in mind. So is the 2019 iMac worthy of an upgrade? Well, that depends on which model computer you have right now. Obviously anything that's more than a couple of years old might be starting to run into some performance bumps here or there, but if you're not running into any significant delays when you use your Mac, whether it's an iMac or a MacBook Pro, then it's the no upgrade is probably necessary. This is really only a spec boost, and so there won't be any new features that you're missing out on right now. Now, if you have an old iMac or want to upgrade to a bigger 27 inch model and use this as a primary work machine for maybe Final Cut, After Effects, Photoshop, etc., the 27 inch i9 model with the Vega 48 would probably be the route to go. I would definitely opt for the SSD over the Fusion Drive as well for those faster disk speeds. And 512 for me is good enough since I use a lot of external storage. As mentioned earlier, do not upgrade the RAM during checkout. Do it after delivery and save yourself a lot more money in the long run. It's very easy to swap out and you can save yourself a lot of money. Also keep in mind, if you're an everyday user who just browses the web, answers some emails, maybe your kids use this computer to do homework, whatever the case may be where you aren't editing photos or videos, motion graphics, um, the base model 21 and a half inch 4K iMac is definitely the route to go in that aspect. It's still that all-in-one familiar great design that's aesthetically pleasing in your home or office, but it just comes in a smaller footprint and it's of course a lot cheaper. So let me know in the comment section down below if you're planning to pick up a 2019 iMac, maybe which model you're going to get, and uh, what computer you are upgrading from uh, in the comment section. And also be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any more videos like this one in the future. And as always guys, this has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.